Good morning everyone and welcome to Worship Online for 5 a.m. Rothy Norman Churches. Let's begin with the words from Psalm 77. I cry aloud to God. I cry aloud and he hears me. In times of trouble I pray to the Lord. All night long I lift my hands in prayer but I cannot find comfort. When I think of God I sigh. When I meditate I feel discouraged. He keeps me awake all night. I am so worried that I cannot speak. I think of days gone by and remember years of long ago. I spend the night in deep thought and meditate and this is what I ask myself. Will the Lord always reject us? Will he never again be pleased with us? Has he stopped loving us? Does his promise no longer stand? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has anger taken the place of his compassion? Then I said, what hurts me most is this, that God is no longer powerful. I will remember your great deeds, Lord. I will recall the wonders you did in the past. I will think about all you have done. I will meditate on all your mighty acts. Everything you do, O God, is holy. No God is as great as you. You, you are the Lord, the God who works miracles. You showed your might among the nations. By your power you saved your people, the descendants of Jacob and of Joseph. When the waters saw you, O God, they were afraid, and the depths of the seas trembled. The clouds poured down rain, thunder crashed from the sky, and lightning flashed in all directions. The crash of your thunder rolled out, and flashes of lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. You walked through the waves. You crossed the deep sea, but your footprints could not be seen. You led your people like a shepherd, with Moses and Aaron in charge. Amen. May God add his blessing to this reading from his holy word. The psalmist wrote, you walked through the waves, you crossed the deep sea, but your footprints could not be seen. You led your people like a shepherd, with Moses and Aaron in charge. Let us pray. In our dark times, Lord, we pray to you, asking that we might have faith as strong as the Israelites who followed your unseen footprints through the deep sea. We are crossing deserts and seas of challenge, and we don't know where you're leading us. We only know that we cannot go back, only forward. May we listen for your voice and seek out your touch on this world and in our lives. May we seek your way and not take our hand from the plough until the work is done for the daytime of our lives. We thank you for your promise to be with us until the end of time. In you we put our trust, to you we sing songs of love and praise, for you are God, unsearchable and un invisible, always ahead of us, yet surrounding us with love, always leading us on out of the past towards the future, so that our present is sometimes uncomfortably fluid, as it is now in our denomination of the church family. Walk ahead of us, we pray, and with our leaders, so that there might be clarity of purpose and good leadership in our time, so that we may truly follow in the unseen footprints. We thank you for Elijah and Elisha and all who have shown us how to walk by faith alone. May we follow with joy beyond all that we know, towards all that you want to show us. This we pray in your holy name. Amen. Let's listen for God's word. From the first book of Kings, chapter 19, verses 15 and 16, and 19 to 21. The Lord said, Return to the wilderness near Damascus, then enter the city and anoint Hazael as king of Syria, anoint Jehu son of Nimshi as king of Israel, and anoint Elisha son of Shaphat from Abel Meloah to succeed you as prophet. Elijah left and found Elisha ploughing with a team of oxen. There were eleven teams ahead of him and he was ploughing with the last one. Elijah took off his cloak and put it on Elisha. Elisha then left his oxen, ran after Elijah and said, Let me kiss my father and mother goodbye and then I will go with you. Elijah answered, All right, go back. I'm not stopping you. Then Elisha went to his team of oxen, killed them and cooked the meat, using the yoke as fuel for the fire. 
he gave the meat to the people and they ate it. Then he went and followed Elijah as his helper. The time came for the Lord to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elijah and Elisha set out from Gilgal and on the way Elijah said to Elisha, Now stay here, the Lord has ordered me to go to Bethel. But Elisha answered, I swear by my loyalty to the living Lord and to you that I will not leave you. So they went on to Bethel. Then Elijah said to Elisha, Now stay here, the Lord has ordered me to go to the Jordan River. But Elisha answered, I swear by my loyalty to the living Lord and to you that I will not leave you. So they went on, and fifty of the prophets followed them to the Jordan. Elijah and Elisha stopped by the river, and the fifty prophets stood a short distance away. Then Elijah took off his cloak, rolled it up and struck the water with it. The water divided, and he and Elisha crossed to the other side on dry ground. There, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what you want me to do for you before I'm taken away. Let me receive the share of your power that will make you me your successor, Elisha answered. That is a difficult request to grant, Elijah replied. But you will receive it if you see me as I am being taken away from you. If you don't see me, you won't receive it. They kept talking as they walked on. Then suddenly a chariot of fire pulled by horses of fire came between them and Elijah was taken up to heaven by a whirlwind. Elisha saw it and cried out to Elijah, My father, my father, mighty defender of Israel, you're gone. And he never saw Elijah again. In grief, Elisha tore his cloak in two. Then he picked up Elijah's cloak that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. He struck the water with Elijah's cloak and said, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? Then he struck the water again, and it divided, and he walked over to the other side. We also read from Luke's Gospel in chapter 9. As the time drew near when Jesus would be taken up to heaven, he made up his mind and set out on his way to Jerusalem. He sent messengers ahead of him who went into a village in Samaria to get everything ready for him. But the people there would not receive him because it was clear that he was on his way to Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to call fire down from heaven to destroy them? Jesus turned and rebuked them. Then Jesus and his disciples went on to another village. As they went on their way, a man said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lie down and rest. He said to another man, Follow me. But that man said, Sir, first let me go back and bury my father. Jesus answered, Let the dead bury their own dead. You go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Someone else said, I will follow you, sir, but first let me go and say goodbye to my family. Jesus said to him, anyone who starts to plough then keeps looking back is of no use to the kingdom of God. Amen. May God add his blessing to all these readings from his holy word. To his name be praise and glory. Jesus said, anyone who starts to plough then keeps looking back is of no use to the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, interpret for us the words we have heard so that we can live them in our own lives in love and through your power upholding us in our purpose and calling. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Listening in to the conversation between God and Elijah on the mountain top at the beginning of our reading from the Book of Kings, I hear both understanding and love and a little frustration. God has a plan, but Elijah isn't listening to it. He has gone back to Mount Sinai thinking that he and all his people have failed. Like all of us, Elijah can only see the span of his own lifetime and know of the past, not the future. And the past is always so full of other people's achievements, which always seem to be so far beyond ours. Built up by the praise of those who inherited the results of their work, 
The past always looks easier than the present, doesn't it? Yet it was not. And in this, the Bible is entirely honest. Elijah was struggling towards the end of his work. He had wanted to see all the people of Israel turn back to God and away from idols and false gods. He had wanted Jezebel's priests of Baal out of Israel. He had wanted his own king Ahab to turn back to the right faith. And in all of this, Elijah judged that he had failed. In concentrating only on his own view of things, Elijah could see nothing but failure. But God had a bigger vision. God could see who was needed next. God was sending Elijah out to anoint them and send them on their way of service. Hazael as king of Syria, Jehu as king of Israel, and Elisha as Elijah's own successor. Elijah was to be replaced by a younger man and tasked with his training in the time that remained. Our story today concentrates on this relationship between the old and the young prophet. Elijah left Sinai and went to find Elisha, who was ploughing behind his team of oxen, the last in the line of twelve teams. Elijah threw his cloak over Elisha and the younger man left his oxen, asking only one thing of Elijah, that he could go and kiss his parents goodbye. In the end he did rather more than that. He had a celebratory feast. He killed his oxen and cooked a feast for his family and the other people there, burning the yoke that was the tool of his trade. For Elisha there could be no going back. He had sacrificed his present for God's future. Was Elijah surprised by Elisha's actions? The Bible doesn't tell us. If anything, Elijah sounds quite offhand. Go back, I'm not stopping you, he said. Hold these words of Elijah in your heads as we move on to what came next. For Elisha watched Elijah deal with kings and warlords, armies and possibilities, seeking always the Lord's will and message for his people, whether they would listen or not. The time came for Elijah to leave. And unlike the time when he had gone to Sinai in failure, he would leave seeing a future stretching ahead, even if he would not be in it. There was, after all, no failure. There was a journey, and Elijah had played his full part. And what follows is the strange story of how Elijah left and Elisha inherited his power. Even after their time as prophet and apprentice, Elijah could not be sure that God would choose to use Elisha as he had used him. What followed was a strange game of cat and mouse, as Elijah set off on his last journey and kept trying to leave Elisha behind. This was one more test for Elisha. Had he learned to disobey as well as to obey in the right cause? Was he Elijah's puppet or God's servant? Had he grown enough to make his own decisions? From the moment he had killed his oxen, Elisha had been Elijah's apprentice. That first action of assent and dedication was a sign of what was to come because Elisha could not be left behind. He needed to see what happened and he had to pass this last test to be as useful to God as Elijah had always been, despite Elijah's inability to see the good in what he had done. Elisha followed through three attempts to leave him behind, until at last Elijah turned and asked him what it was he wanted. Elisha, understanding that this was the last conversation, asked for the power to carry on Elijah's work for God. It was his dedication to God and to Elijah that made him the recipient of the vision of the chariot of fire that swept Elijah away. He went to the end of Elijah's journey. In grief and in another gesture of dedication, Elisha tore his own cloak in two and put on Elijah's cloak, the prophet's cloak. He would indeed go on to serve God with Elijah's power, which was now his, the power to move hearts and minds in the service of God, the power to do what was necessary in his time, even if it would not be understood by those around him. Contrast this with the day when Jesus met someone who wanted to follow him. 
The first man was told that foxes have holes and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lie down and rest. Another man was actually invited to follow Jesus, but he wanted to go back first and bury his father. In most circumstances, an entirely understandable delay. But Jesus said, let the dead bury their own dead. You go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Someone else wanted to go and say goodbye to his family, just like Elisha did. But Jesus said to him, anybody who starts to plough then keeps looking back is of no use to the kingdom of God. Difficult words for us to hear. These sayings have to be understood in their context, for Jesus literally had nowhere to call his own in his preaching days. He was free from anything that would tie him down. His family and his friends understood this. They loved him, but they let him go his way, all the way to the cross. Like Elijah, Jesus knew that the time was coming for him to face the end of his time on earth. He could not afford to fail to complete God's plan. Ahead of him was a path that no one else would be asked to follow. Not a chariot of fiery glory, but an ignominious and painful death on a cross. It would take all his courage and commitment to see this journey through. Those who would follow his way would have to be prepared to sacrifice life, life as it was, in order to serve God's purpose and have life as it could be. And they would have to do it as Elijah did, without knowing what lay ahead, and as Elisha did, without knowing if they would be able to follow those who mentored and taught them. They would have to walk in faith without knowing the end of the journey. And this is the calling of every single one of us who has heard God use our name. As we come towards the end of the journey for the, our interpretation of church in Scotland, we too are looking for the next generation to take on the cloak and live their faith out in the public sphere to speak the word of God fearlessly into their time and to do better than we have done. Like Elijah, it's difficult to see the signs of our time in falling membership and closing congregations as anything but failure. Yet Elijah was not a failure. Neither are we and neither are our congregations. We cannot see what the rest of our faith will look like. Only the generations following us, those for whom we will be the past, only they will be able to judge our success or failure. Those who take the church on beyond us will need to walk by faith alone, as the prophets did, and build anew all that is falling apart on us. They will have to build it in new and innovative ways that suit their times. For now, we should be Elijah to their Elisha, showing them how we have done it and waiting to see if the cloak of faith will work for them as it has for us. God is good and Elijah saw who would come after him and carry on the work. May God bless us with the same visions of those who will take on all that we have given our faith, our dedication and for some of us our whole lives for. The words of Christ remind us that this is what is necessary. A refusal to be tied to our own past, a willingness to accept a calling to something new, the faith to learn from a mentor or teacher and the commitment to pick up the cloak when it falls from the shoulders of the one who carried it before us. A commitment to leave where we are and move on into the unknown future. A willingness not always to be looking back but to focus on the future. Even in the deepest despair, Elijah was not left without a future beyond him, and neither are we. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of all the earth, we pray for all the creatures of the earth across a planet riven with war and fear and famine and sickness, with destruction and climate chaos. But also we pray for this world of incredible beauty, where love still grows and thrives, where nature repairs the damage done by thoughtless human beings 
and brings into new being new wonders in the sea and the sky, on and under the earth. We thank you for this world that supports us and we ask you to give humanity the wisdom to support the world and to know when to stop taking risks and start taking care of all that lives, breathes and grows. Forgive us all our arrogant greed and bless the work of all who are teaching us to step back, to see the big picture of a future under threat. Help us across the world to stop fighting and to start cooperating, to look for understanding and a growing together so that the hungry can be fed, the sick healed and the homeless housed in sustainable care for all of Earth's creatures. Lord, we belong to you. You made us and set us free to choose how we live. May we all live wisely. May we love beyond all limit. Following Jesus Christ who showed us what it means to give up everything for the sake of others. In his name we pray for those who are sick in our congregations and communities. For those who are grieving and for those who are breaking under the strain of their worries. In silence we bring their names to lay at your feet. In humility we pray for our Church of Scotland, asking that it may continue in your blessing, reshaped for our time and for the needs of its people. And we pray for those doing the hard work of change across presbyteries and congregations, leading through this time of confusion into clarity of your purpose. May we follow in faith and trust until the end of the way. All these are prayers we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to say together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen.